Hi, myself Dr. Vivek Shashindran and welcome to yet another uh, episode of ENT Talks. In fact, in one of my previous episodes, I had spoken about sile endoscopy and its indications. Well, sile endoscopy is a procedure that is done for evaluation and also treatment of salivary gland disorders. Now, I did receive a few queries regarding salivary calculus or salivary stones. Now, the question was, can all stones be removed with the help of a sile endoscope? Well, the answer would be no, but I would say a vast majority of the stones can be removed with the help of sile endoscope. Now, what are the things that we generally take into consideration? So, when you talk about salivary stones, these are generally seen more commonly in the submandibular gland as compared to the parotid gland. Now, again, the size of the stone, is it a millimeter size stone, is it a, is it a centimeter size stone and how big the stone is? The location of the stone, that is within the duct, where exactly is the stone located? Uh, is it located way anteriorly or is it way posteriorly? Now, these are things that we take into consideration when we counsel a patient for sile endoscopy. In general, small stones can be retrieved endoscopically most of the times. However, as the size of the stone increases, it poses a challenge for a pure endoscopic retrieval. So in those situations, we may either opt for a combined approach, combined approach in the sense, we introduce the sile endoscope, we visualize the stone, locate the stone, and then intraorally, that is through the oral cavity itself, we kind of mark the location of the stone and then place an incision and retrieve the stone. So this becomes a combined approach. You are using the help of a sile endoscope to kind of locate the stone and subsequently you are resorting to a incision and retrieving the stone. Or in the third instance, now if the stones are too large, uh, sometimes what we do is we kind of fragment it as well. Now you can, you have the options of using a lithoclast or even a laser and fragmenting the stone and then taking it out in pieces. So eventually what we try to do in majority of the cases of calculi, try to preserve the gland because most of these cases what happens is that once a stone is removed, once obstruction is relieved, the gland gets back to its normal function. So the whole idea is to avoid an external incision, to avoid complications that could arise with an open approach the cosmetic concerns and eventually if you can preserve a normal gland that is pretty much satisfying thank you so much